Hello everybody, I'm Ahmed Salem and I'm happy to talk about our model hijacking attack. This is joint work with Michael and Yang. First, let's ask some questions. So, do you think this model is providing a malicious or a benign task? For example, if the model is classifying CIFAR 10 dataset, then I think we can easily say that this is a benign model. However, if it's generating some toxic content, then I think we can just say that this is a malicious. But what if the model is performing both tasks? So it is like classifying CIFAR 10 dataset and it's also generating some toxic content. I think we still can say that this is a malicious model because it's still doing some malicious task. However, now the question is who is accountable for this? Should the model owner be accountable for this malicious task or is a third party is accountable for this? I think before answering this question, we need to take a look at the state of the art requirements. Which means what does the model owner needs to do to get like a good performing model nowadays? As you know, the model sizes is getting much more, like it's getting larger. For example, models are getting deeper, layers are getting bigger, which means that the computational power needed to train this model is increasing significantly. This also results in the huge amount of data needed to train these models. So nowadays, users or companies try to collect data from multiple ways and to train their own models. So in other words, the effect of the model owner is that their new parties are included in the training. These parties can be either like just donating their or providing their data or giving computational resources. And this inclusion of new parties raises the threat of the training time attacks, which the model hijacking attack is one of them. So let me try to briefly say what is this model hijacking attack. So basically we have a model owner and this model owner wants to train his model to do some benign task, for example, the CIFAR 10 task. And our research question is basically, can a third party implement their own hijacking task in this model by just poisoning its data? So the model owner cannot train the model on his own, so he needs to collect data from other parties, and one of these parties can be malicious. This malicious party aims at implementing their own hijacking task, which is like in this example, just a toxic content or generating a toxic content. So we just label this uh, like as a hijacking task and the original one, which just call it original task. So for the threat model, we just consider the ability to poison the training data. So this is like a normal assumption for the poisoning attacks or the training type attacks. So now before going in details, let's just briefly discuss what can go wrong. Why is this like attack? Why should we care about this attack basically? So we already talked that this new hijacking task can be unethical, can be illegal, and then the model owner can be blamed for this. But there is also one more threat to this. So basically it's a threat of parasitic computing, which means nowadays that to maintain the API for models, model owner usually pays some significant fees per month so their model can be online and users can just use it. So now if an adversary comes and hijack this model to provide their own data, so basically he will be providing his application or his um, task for free for different users. So now what is like, we define different attack requirements for a successful model hijacking attack which can be classified into two classes. Where the first one is stealthiness and the second one is performance. So the, the first one basically means that the model hijacking or like the hijacking data should be camouflaged. So we want that this poisoning data that the adversary tries to inject in the training data to be hard to distinguish from the original tasks one. And regarding the performance that the final model or the hijacked model should still maintain good utility on the original task. However, it should also provide good performance when queried by the hijacking task. So this is how the model hijacking attack works in the training phase, which means in the phase of training the target model. So we have the original target data set and we have also the hijacking data set, which the adversary has. The adversary use some hijacky data set, which is just the data set to camouflage the hijacking data set. So basically the hijacking data set should be camouflaged using the hijacky data set and the output we call it camouflage data set. 
This is used using a camouflager, which we will go in detail in the next slide. Now, this camouflage dataset and the original dataset are both combined and then used to train the target model. So what does the camouflage looks like? So basically, it is consists of two encoders. One encoder which takes the hijacking samples and the other one the hijacky samples. In this case, we're just using the original sample as the hijacky one. And these encoders <coughs> encode the, these samples into latent vectors. Then when these latent vectors are concatenated and input to the decoder, which generates the camouflage sample. So this camouflage sample should look like the original sample or the hijacky sample and should have the features of the hijacking sample. So to achieve this, we propose different approaches or different losses. The first one is the chameleon attack and the second one is the adverse chameleon attack. So the, basically the difference between these two attacks or losses is how similar the hijacking dataset is from or compared with the original task. If these datasets are similar, for example here, like the CIFAR-10 and CELABE, then it's better to use the adverse chameleon attack. However, if the hijacking task is MNIST, which you can see clustered here, and it is can be easily separated from post dataset, then it's better to use the, or not better, it's, in, it's sufficient to use the chameleon attack. So basically what this figure shows is just randomly sampled 100 images from each of these dataset, and then we reduce the dimensions to two dimension using TISN. So the chameleon attack basically consists of two parts. The first one is a loss on the visual appearance. So basically we are just calculating the L1 distance between the camouflage sample and the original sample. And the second part is on the feature level. So F here is a feature extractor. For example, we use the mobile net to extract the features of the camouflage sample and the hijacking sample. And then we try to minimize the distance between these two samples. Similarly, the adverse chameleon attack has these two parts. However, in addition, we have this new part, which is basically we are trying to increase the distance between the camouflage sample and the original sample to make it more distinct. So how to do the attack after the model is hijacked is basically we get the hijacking sample and we camouflage it using a hijacky sample. <coughs> I'm sorry. This now camouflaged sample is then just queried to the model and then the model will output some label and then the label is just mapped map back to the hijacking tasks label. So now to go to like before providing the results of our different attacks, we just let's, let me just introduce our evaluation settings. We use the three datasets, MNIST, CIFAR, CELABE. And for the models for feature extractor, we try two different models. So we have the mobile net v2 and we have Menzanet. For target models, we try three target models like ResNet, VGG, and Google Net. And finally, to construct the camouflage, we just use four layer CNNs for the encoders and it's reverse for the decoder. We use two metrics here to evaluate the performance of our attack. So basically we have the utility, which compares the performance of the hijacked model with a model trained on only clean data when the testing data is just from the same distribution as the original task. And the attack success rate, which means, or which stands for like measuring the performance of the uh, hijacked model on a hijacked testing data set. So first, this let's see the chameleon attacks result. So this show some camouflaged images. So this row is here. This is camouflaged CELABE images, and this is camouflaged CIFAR images when we are using MNIST as the hijacking task. And this just to give you an idea how these three datasets look like. So as you can see, the camouflage samples look like the like the original task samples. However, there is still some visible artifacts, which is the results of trying to optimize the features to look like the features of the hijacking task. This shows the utility and attack success rate for the chameleon attack. So as you see here, the model utility doesn't drop much, so it's almost the same. And the other one, the other figure here shows the attack success rate. So here, naive is basically, we just use the hijacking samples as is without doing any camouflaging. So this is like 
the best we can do so and the chameleon one is using the chameleon attack so to camouflage the data of course camouflaging the data makes it less visible to the attack so it's more stealthy so as you see most like most both um, achieves pretty high performance like it's above 99 for both cases so for stealthiness we reduce the we like we randomly sample images from like camouflaged one original one and then the hijacking one which is labeled naive here and then we reduce them to two dimension using disney and plot them as you see here for example the amnest images or the naive one it can be easily clustered or easily separated from the original one unlike the camouflaged one which is mixed which show that our attack indeed is more stealthy than just using the hijacking dataset as is similarly we showed the result for the adverse chameleon attack so here we show both like we use CIFAR and celebrate datasets to attack each other as you see still the images looks like the original dataset with some artifacts so it's kind of similar like adverse uh, like the adverse like the chameleon attack I'm sorry and this shows the utility and the attack success rate so here there is a bit of a drop between the adverse chameleon attack and the clean one and similarly uh, you can see some drop of between like the adverse chameleon attack and the naive one in the attack success rate so this drop is basically because these two data sets are more complex of course it's more complex to classify celebi and cfr than to compare like than to classify MNIST. however the performance is much higher than random guessing of course like this in the worst case which is like the celebi that here the performance is above like 57 percent this again shows the stealthiness of our attack so what you see here is the three data sets like the, ad, the camouflaged one, the original one, and the naive one, which is just using the hijack data set. And as you see, the camouflaged data is more mixed with the original one compared with the naive one or the hijacking one. So overall, this shows that our attack can still achieve good performance while being stealthy. But of course, there is still room for improvement. For example, we are still trying to make less visible artifacts. We are still trying to get better performance in the more complex cases, which we hope we get in some future work. So there is still more details in the paper. So please check it out. So for example, we evaluate different hyperparameters, for example, using different loss functions. What is the effect of the, the varying the poisoning rate, the size of the hijacky data set. We also present some defenses against the model hijacking attack and we evaluate that. So to quickly summarize, we present the model hijacking attack, which can have basically a present computing threat and also accountability threat, where, which is if the model owner gets blamed for some hijacking task which he didn't just know that it exists and we show how to realize this attack using two variant like the chameleon and adverse chameleon attack we show the results which show that our camouflage data are indeed looks more like the original data or the hijacky one but there are still some artifacts on them and finally, we show that the utility and the attack success rate, which show that our attack is strong, but of course there is still some, like some things to improve. So thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take your question. And just a quick note that the code of this attack will be public soon, so you can try it yourself. Thank you.